this seems to look good, but since we're performing it in front of a live audience tomorrow, we should probably practice it to make sure I've memorized it. One queen, bedecked in jewels, rode to Jerusalem beside her husband on the Second Crusade, dazzling the enemy. One queen ruled both medieval France and England as well as her homeland, Aquitaine. One queen had ten children and lived to tell the tale in a time when one out of three women died giving birth. One queen emerged unbroken and tough after twenty years in prison in the tower. And one queen proved that women are brave and that we ought to be recognized. I am that queen. Hello. My name is Eleanor of Aquitaine. I was born in 1122 and I was the firstborn and first daughter of William X of Aquitaine and II, and my mother, also Eleanor. I had one younger brother, William, and one younger sister, Petronella. My siblings and I grew up in Bordeaux, France, in the castle. As a child, I was spunky and highly energetic. My many governesses could not contain my rambunctious spirit as they tried to have me pursue an education. As I was royalty and from a very progressive country, I did get an amazing education considering what many other girls my age would have gotten. I studied reading, writing, math, Latin literature, music, and poetry. This comfortable life was shortened, however, when I was only eight years old, my mother died. At a young age, my father started looking for suitors for me. Choosing my husband wasn't impor as important as should not because I would inherit and rule all of my father's lands. <clears throat> After a while, he found me a young man named Louis the Seventh, King of France. Louis was well educated and handsome, but he was also unfortunately pompous and cowardly. We were married only six short weeks after my father's death. I was the king. Immediately there were problems. I, being headstrong, brave, and intelligent, had a lot of ideas of my own about how to rule the country. I refused to stay, to stay behind when Louis told me he was going on the Second Crusade. She was very interested in The Crusades were known as Holy Wars. Europeans were Christians, and at that time, their sacred land in Jerusalem was occupied by Muslims. The Pope, who was a Christian leader at that time, ordered arms to go and fight the Muslims out. When Louis told me that I could go on the Second Crusade with him, I was very happy and excited as well. But his surprises were far from over. On the Crusade, he thought I was just going to ride beside him and do what he said. <laughs> but instead, I gave him ideas for battle strategies and I helped attend to the wounded soldiers. He was already mad, but these actions made him furious. We disagreed completely about how to win that Crusade. Louis, of course, was wrong. When we returned home from the crusade a few years later, we rode home on separate ships, and very soon after coming home, we got a divorce. But my trips on the crusades weren't all in vain. I did get to see many wonderful inventions that the crusade had to offer, like things that aided us in battles, like the cannon, gunpowder, stirrups, and the saddle. I also saw things that made life more comfortable, like the invention of spices, eyeglasses, and beautiful silks for dresses. But now back to the romantic part of my life. About eight weeks after divorcing Louis, my uncle Raymond, ruler of the Antioch, arranged me a second marriage with a much younger man. I was 30 and he was 18. His name was Henry, Henry of Anjou. When Henry and I were married, we were very powerful together, ruling almost all of Europe. I, of course, had my land in Aquitaine and Portu, and Henry I was head of the Angevin Empire, which stretched from northern Scotland through parts of what is now France and right into Spain. I had eight children with Henry. Come back here, Jean, you know what Mama was saying. What will I say? He stole his over door. No, I didn't. Stop telling me now. Boy! Boy. John? Give him the builder, back the door if you took it. Yes, Mother. And Richard, remember, no swords in the house, there was an accident last time. Yes, Mother. My two eldest boys, John and Richard, didn't get along well at all in brotherhood nor in adulthood. You may have heard of Robin Hood. Yeah, well, King John is my own son. King Richard, when he came back from the Third Crusade, 
found his whole country in chaos. Richard, who was my favourite son, later became known as Richard the Lionhearted, which got from I also had three daughters. The name of one of the other. Yes, dear. John took my dolly. Uh-huh. John, I expect Matilda's doll back to her, or Allison will be coming check. Yes, Mother. I also had two other daughters whose names were Joan and Eleanor. When all of my girls got older, they married kings, which kept the family rule in my hands for the next 400 years. Yes, for and I Henry were happy, but then all of the power that we possessed started to go to his head. He wanted to rule everything and everyone, including the Catholic Church. He did many things that made me mad in that marriage, but the thing that made me most mad was when he voiced to his gods he was irritated with Thomas the Becket. His gods misinterpreted him, and they murdered Thomas. I was shocked and devastated, for he was a very good friend. Yes, Miss Olivia. See me by my daddy, Richard, to the rescue. That's lovely, dear. And I hope you wash up for dinner. Go on now. When Thomas a Beckett was murdered, I got very angry at Henry and wanted to rebel. I went back to Aquitaine, where I started planning for the next five years. I also made my palace a place for the Alton Carter, sponsoring over 20 women poets and troubadours. I got one of my favorite poets, Christian de Troyes, to write the King Arthur books, the first one, all in rhyming couplets. And I did all of this while plotting against my silly husband, who was busy off chasing women. When I, because I wanted to rebel against Henry, and Richard was willing to help me, we staged to leave in 1173 because I was feared I would get killed. But in 1174, Henry's guards captured me and locked me up in a tower to prevent me from rebelling again. He then gave each of his sons more land and more power so they wouldn't rebel against him. I was to spend the next 20 years in that tower, and after those long 20 very boring years, I was finally rescued by Richard, and I was pleased to find out Henry had died. But every life, even the best and most exciting, must come to an end. Mine did on March 31st, 12.04. I was 82 years old, which is an extremely long life in my day, mind you. I left a tribute to women, proving that women can be brave and that we are good. I changed the course of history for the next 400 years. Oh, one more thing. By now you all know how important I was. This explains what I am mentioned in the 7th grade medieval history textbook. Not even once. Thank you. You may bow. Yes, come in. Your Majesty, a letter from the King. Right, well. Have as I told you before, I have much better things to be doing than starting with him. Yes, Your Majesty, many times. Well, what must be done must be done.